heart of Europe is a very happy country, a tiny nation that boasts one of the highest standards of living on the planet. Luxembourg is the last Grand Duchy remaining in the world. It's also the magic kingdom for global corporations seeking to avoid taxes. Luxembourg openly promotes itself as a business wonderland. Corporations can shift their worldwide profits here and pay little taxes. Controversial strategies that rile governments around the world. It's a place where accounting fantasy becomes reality. Luxembourg openly courts foreign business by promising secrecy. What goes in the Grand Duchy stays in the Grand Duchy. Well, maybe not. Someone peeked open the curtain of corporate secrecy here, and the authorities were not amused. A leak from this Luxembourg office of PricewaterhouseCoopers is exposing the Grand Duchy's most intimate tax secrets to the world. Hundreds of confidential tax agreements brokered by the accounting firm for its international clients were just revealed by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. The leak shows how over 340 major corporations use Luxembourg to avoid paying billions in taxes in countries where they do business. Big names like Amazon, FedEx, IKEA, but also in there, a corporation entirely owned by the government of Canada. The Public Service Pension Investment Board is a federal crown corporation that invests the pension funds of all federal employees, including the RCMP and the employees of the Canada Revenue Agency. It prides itself in doing socially responsible investments around the world. So why is a corporation owned by the Canadian government using a controversial tax haven to conduct business? The leaked document refers to a real estate deal in Germany we went on a trip to find out. The capital of Germany is one of the hippest cities in the world, attracting millions of visitors. It's also a magnet for international investors, hunting for bargain price real estate. Working-class neighborhoods like Moabit were once subsidized housing, where the less affluent, young families and the needy found refuge. At a community fundraiser, the message is clear. Without our homes, where do we live? For the Canadian Crown Corporation, this cheap Berlin neighborhood was a potential gold mine. We team up with German television reporter Verena Klein. Our first stop, an apartment complex on Lerterstrasse. We got a tip. The Canadian Crown Corporation invested some of its money here. Hello. Hello. We meet retirees, Enrit and Bert Revelinski. They have lived in this apartment since it was built in 1970 and raised their children here. Mm. <laughs> Super. But in 2005, the cash draft Berlin government sold this social housing complex to private hands, who sold it again in 2008 to foreign investors. Bernd and Henrit feared higher rents might force them out. And then comes, when the right kitchen is broken, then makes man sich Gedanken, what will aus uns here in diesem Kiez? Ne? They didn't even know who was their new landlord, but they once got a letter with an address from Luxembourg. Plus, wie gesagt, das ist immer so ein Luxemburg erzeugt bei mir man faden Nachgeschmack. Da weiß ich schon Bescheid. Da haben ja viele ihre Steuerverstecke. <laughs> Und da weiß man immer nicht, was kommt dabei raus. Wem ihr hört das nur wirklich? Was haben die vor? A few blocks down the street. Hello. Hello. Susan Torka runs a tenants rights office. They spent months looking for clues about who in Luxembourg was buying rental properties in the area and why. Using different registries, her group has found a piece of the puzzle, a company name, Germerlux Felicity. This uh, Germa Lux Felicity, one, two, three, five, all these numbers, yeah. And then they, that was the first time they had an address here in Berlin. It was Einstein Ufer, 63. Einstein Ufer? Einstein Ufer. Yes. After passing a gate and two inner courtyards, we find this. Germanlux, oh, Germanlux, yeah? Yeah, it is. yeah. 
There's no no no, no way no. to uh, to no. ring or to call or anything. So all all there is is it's uh, it's a mailbox. It's a dead end. But a search for German Locks online revealed a second address. It's in East Berlin. This is not what I was expecting. No. Yes. No sign of Germalox or Felicity on the building directory, and the building manager appears to be away. But a friendly tenant passes by. Entschuldigung, könnten wir Sie kurz was fragen? Da steht She has also heard of the company Felicity. She has no idea it is linked to Canada. Und diese Felicity, die sitzt in, in Luxemburg. Ah. Also ich habe den Mitvertrag noch, den alten. Also wenn Sie die Adresse und so haben, ich Thousand dank. It seems we're in luck. She comes back with yet another company name in an address in Luxembourg. <laughs> Luxembourg inherited great French gastronomy and efficient German bookkeeping. We combined both at a cafe by looking for online information in the Luxembourg official books while having a snack. We find JP Residential with a list of its directors. Another quick online search provides a phone number for one of them, Marcel Stéphanie. Oui, bonjour. He doesn't sound that eager to help us. D'accord. It... Well, he just hung up on us. He hung up? Yes. To be fair, he may be quite busy. We discover Marcel Stéphanie is also listed as director of over 50 other corporations. We also call Price Waterhouse Coopers, the Canadian Crown Corporation's tax advisors in Luxembourg, but they turned down our request for an interview. And if we thought showing up in person would help, we were wrong. No, we want, we want to film. Okay. It's time to pay a visit to the address we got from the friendly tenant. 124 Boulevard de la Petrus, the address that appears to link the Berlin real estate to the Canadian government. Uh, je cherche um, JP Residential. Est-ce que c'est oui, ici? Oui, c'est ici? Oui. oui. We are told to contact the federal government's company in Montreal. Mais Felicity aussi que je cherchais à rejoindre quelqu'un. Bah c'est la même société. Et, et puis Germalux. Oui, c'est tout, tout ça, c'est domicilié là, c'est la même société. 700 million dollars of the Canadian Crown Corporation's European assets are managed by two Luxembourg employees in a rent-a-desk building. C'est toute la même personne. Ah, il la tient occupé. Euh, ah ben, bah, je ne sais petit. pas, hein, je ne travaille pas avec elle, je ne peux pas savoir. <laughs> So why all these different companies hosted at the same address? The leak document explains how it all works. You might think a Canadian government corporation buying apartment buildings in Germany would be simple, funds transferred from here to there. Not quite. The PSBIB created instead layers of subsidiaries in Luxembourg and in Germany. In total, 24 corporate entities were created for this deal, most of them shell companies. A U.S. private investment fund also got a small piece of the action by using corporations it controls in Gibraltar, a tax haven, and in Delaware. This intricate maze allowed the PSBIB to avoid paying taxes in Luxembourg on its German income. It used a complex system of cascading loans between the different shell entities it owns. Although it paid some taxes in Germany on the rental income, when the rest trickled through Luxembourg and back to Canada, it was in the form of interest payments on those internal loans. Interest payments leave Luxembourg tax-free, so the Luxembourg tax bill shrunk to almost nothing with the full approval of the Grand Duchy. We traveled just over the border to Trier, the oldest city in Germany. They know a thing or two about taxes here. They've been collecting them since the era of Julius Caesar. We show the leaked document to the director of the regional tax office, Jürgen Kentenisch. It's clear for him that the Canadian government corporation avoided some taxes in Germany. It's a very aggressive way to avoid taxes. And the only goal is to avoid taxes. He says the PSBIB used a controversial loophole by avoiding the German land transfer tax when it bought the buildings. 
Kintanish admits there's little that German tax authorities could have done about it because the accountants were exploiting legal loopholes. But is this fair? Should a reputable and decent businessman do something like that? So how much was avoided? The Canadian Crown Corporation bought 69 buildings in Berlin and became the owner of over 4,500 rental units. According to sources, the PSBIB and its partner paid 260 million euros. By avoiding the land transfer tax, it deprived the Berlin government of close to 12 million euros in revenues. I do wonder about governments involved in the fight against tax avoidance with the OECD and the G20 that do such things themselves. It raises questions. In Berlin, the German government did change some of its laws to put a stop to some of the most abusive practices, like the land transfer tax avoidance scheme. But opposition member Gerard Schick didn't think it went far enough. He wants the Canadian government to pay the money back. But uh, the government majority decided only to close the loophole for future cases. So in this case, uh, the tax is gone and uh, the company will not pay taxes. Sheik is critical of governments claiming to address aggressive tax avoidance, while state-owned companies do the opposite. I think this is hypocritical. Our governments should work for better rules, but they should also, in the companies they control, make sure that they're not part of the problem and avoid taxes as aggressively as private investors do. In written statements, the Public Service Pension Investment Board says it gained no tax advantage by routing investments through Luxembourg because it has tax-exempt status in Canada. The board respectfully disagrees with characterizations of its actions as aggressive tax avoidance. The structure was communicated to German tax authorities and the board was advised by reputable tax advisors. In a letter, the tax advisor PricewaterhouseCoopers rejects any suggestion that there is anything improper about the firm's work. In Ottawa, the Conservative government has repeatedly vowed to crack down on aggressive tax avoidance by multinationals. So our findings led to this question period moment. So how are Canadians supposed to trust the Conservatives to crack down on aggressive tax avoidance when they're busy setting up shell companies of their own? As the honorable member well knows, of course, this is a, an arm's length, uh, arm's length administration from the federal government. And we, of course, on this side of the House, expect that all investments should be done in compliance with laws, and rules and regulations in a transparent manner and uh, to the uh, greater benefit of the clients. According to sources, the Canadian government Crown Corporation turned a hefty profit by disposing recently of its Berlin real estate. Bernd and Enrit are surprised and angry that the Canadians avoided paying millions of euros in taxes. That money, they say, was badly needed for the community. Ja, da, da bin ich erstmal jetzt irgendwie sprachlos. Ja. <lacht> Hinter jedem, der hier wohnt, steckt ein menschliches Schicksal. Und das ist den Wurscht. Die gehen über Leichen, Hauptsache die Kohle stimmt. In Luxembourg, life is still good, but European authorities have launched investigations into its secret tax deals with big corporations. The last Grand Duchy in the world may soon have to change its tune. Frédéric Zalak, CBC News, Luxembourg.